Could you imagine yourself stumbling upon an ancient book filled with deadly poisons or gazing through a lens crafted by Viking hands that could have ignited fires or spied distant lands? What if you found an underwater city that challenges everything we thought we knew about early human civilization? Welcome to Exciting Archaeology News, where the past isn't just history. It's a treasure trove of mysteries that even scientists can't fully explain. Today, we're diving into amazing discoveries that have left experts scratching their heads and rethinking long-held beliefs. From submerged cities that defy our understanding of ancient urban planning to eerie Irish tombs that might have inspired the tale of Dracula. We've got a lineup that may give you a few goosebumps. So if you're ready to challenge what you think you know about the world, hit that subscribe button and let's unearth the inexplicable. First up at number 12, we have the Musée des Moulages in Paris, France. Arguably the world's most unsettling museum, this place is a macabre gallery of dermatological wax figures that spookily mimic dismembered body parts and even entire corpses. Established in 1867, the museum initially showcased only paintings and photographs of skin ailments. The game changed when a wax fruit sculptor, known solely as Beretta, joined the team. Over four decades, Beretta crafted over 3,500 lifelike models of afflicted skin and individuals. Admirers claim it's the ultimate fusion of art and science, while critics liken it to a sideshow spectacle. We won't pass judgment, but we will say this. You'll encounter maladies so obscure you'll wish you hadn't. The human physique harbors some dark secrets, and this museum has immortalized them in wax. Moving on to number 11, Bangar Fort in India, a place shrouded in spectral lore. While we won't weigh in on the existence of ghosts, we can tell you about this sinister abandoned fortress where phantoms are said to roam after dusk. Built in the 17th century, the fort was once crowded with life, housing an entire community. However, tales of hauntings grew so intense that residents fled, establishing a new settlement not far away. One such legend recounts a sorcerer who, with his dying breath, cursed the fort after a failed healing attempt led to his demise. Today, the fort's ancient gates and palaces stand mute, drawing tourists during the daylight, but repelling locals who deem such visits foolhardy. If you think you've got the metal, perhaps you'll dare to explore. Next on our list at number 10, we have Italian mummification, courtesy of Girolamo Segato. Arthur C. Clarke once theorized that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, and Segato's work exemplifies this notion. His techniques in mummification and petrification were so groundbreaking that they remain a mystery to this day. Why? because his 19th century contemporaries, unnerved by his methods, labeled him a sorcerer and eradicated all documentation of his work posthumously. A lifelong aficionado of human anatomy and ancient Egyptian mummification, Sagato ventured to Egypt at age 26 and returned with a revolutionary preservation method. He even crafted the infamous Sagato table, an unsettling piece made from petrified human tissues. While his work may have been disconcerting, it's astonishing that two centuries later, we're still unable to solve the secrets behind his methods. Transitioning to number nine, we explore the creepy tradition of Victorian mourning dolls. In the 19th century, these dolls served as heartbreaking tokens in British death rituals enduring into the early 1900s. Given that mortality was a frequent visitor in Victorian homes, especially among infants and children, death wasn't the societal taboo it is today. By mid-century, it became customary to commission a special mourning doll to place on a child's grave. Whenever feasible, the doll's hair would be crafted from the deceased child's own locks. As time progressed, these dolls evolved into increasingly elaborate and life-sized figures, often dressed in the child's own clothes. Prior to the funeral, these dolls would reside in a crib, their clothing changed daily, serving as a replacement for the lost child. While this practice may strike us as unsettling now, it likely offered a modicum of solace during a period of profound grief. Next on our list at number 8 is the Chamunda sculpture, hailing from Jaipur, Odisha in India. This arresting figure appears as if it's been ripped straight from a horror film. With a semi-skeletal frame, hollow eyes, and a gaping maw, 
This sculpture is the stuff of nightmares. Its elongated nails seem ready to claw, and its veins appear as if they're struggling to burst free from the skin. Yet, this grotesque figure is not a demon, but a goddess. Decorated with a skull garland and her hair bound by a serpent, Chamunda holds a bowl of blood in one hand and a severed head in the other. Named for her conquest over demons, Munda and Chanda, she reigns as the goddess of both death and time. And, uh, judging by her appearance, it seems her battles have exacted a heavy toll. Shifting gears to number seven, we explore a Sumerian mathematical artifact. The Sumerians, possibly the world's first advanced civilization, remain an enigma. Their relics often pose more questions than answers, and this artifact is no exception. Aged at 5,500 years, this clay disk is engraved with what appear to be complex equations. In 2019, scholars proposed a groundbreaking theory. This inscrutable object may actually be a celestial map, chronicling an asteroid impact on Earth dated June 29, 3123 BCE. Discovered in the 19th century, within King Ashurbanipal's ancient library in Nineveh, Iraq, the disk now resides in the British Museum. A recent translation of its cuneiform script includes the phrase, a white stone bull approaching from the sky. Accompanying text refers to cloud formations and other skyward phenomena observed at the time. Remarkably, scientific evidence corroborates an asteroid strike in Kofels, Austria, on that very date, making this artifact a compelling testament to the Sumerians' astronomical prowess. Next, at number six, preserved hearts. Imagine the astonishment of archaeologists in December of 2015 when they unearthed five perfectly embalmed human hearts beneath the age-old Jacobins convent in Toulouse, France. These hearts have been interred for roughly four centuries. Thanks to non-invasive scanning techniques, scientists confirmed that these hearts still possess their chambers, arteries, and valves. Some even display evidence of the heart conditions that likely caused their owner's demise. While the notion of heart removal and separate burial may seem strange to us, it was deemed a romantic gesture in bygone eras. These hearts were meant to be interred alongside their surviving spouses upon their eventual deaths. One such heart belonged to Toussaint Perrine, Knight of Brefilac, and it was discovered in a leaden casket of his wife, Louise de Quengo, Lady of Brefilac, who passed away in 1656. She literally took her husband's heart with her to her eternal rest. In that context, it's oddly touching. Coming in at number five, Incan trophy heads. The Nazca lines in Peru are among the globe's most renowned petroglyphs, yet their creators remain unknown. One unsettling fact we do know is that these ancient artisans also engaged in the grim practice of collecting human heads as trophies. Initially, it was presumed that these heads were war spoil. However, a 2009 study upended this theory. Researchers at Chicago's Field Museum found that these heads actually belonged to individuals from the same community and culture as those who collected them. Rather than tokens of conquest, these heads may have been part of an ancestral veneration practice dating back 1,500 to 2,000 years. Intriguingly, these heads were treated in such a way that they've remained astonishingly well-preserved, retaining even their hair. They were also modified to accommodate woven cords, suggesting that they were worn during rituals or ceremonies. Whatever the underlying motive, the practice offers a haunting glimpse into an ancient culture's beliefs and customs. Next on our list at number four, we delve into the mysterious poisonous book. Initially dismissed as a fabrication when images surfaced online in 2017, historians are now reconsidering its authenticity. Imagine a book, bound in the year 1600, concealing a hidden compartment filled with miniature drawers. Each drawer is labeled, indicating it once housed lethal substances like deadly nightshade, valerian, and thorn apple. A lone green bottle remains, its Latin inscription ominously translated to, All men are fated to die. While it might seem theatrically morbid for an assassin's toolkit, some argue it could be an apothecary. In the early 17th century, the line between poison and medicine was blurred. Small doses of toxic substances were sometimes used therapeutically. Shifting gears to number three, the Visby lenses. The Vikings, often typecast as marauding warriors, were also ingenious builders and inventors. Exhibit A, the Visby lenses. 
Unearthed from Viking graves, these optical curiosities baffle experts. Theories about their purpose range from rudimentary telescopes to fire-starting devices. Dating from the 11th to 12th centuries, these lenses often feature silver mounts, although the mounts themselves appear to be of a later vintage. Scientific analysis reveals low spherical aberration, suggesting that they were crafted to magnify objects. Given their localized distribution and scarcity, it's plausible that a single artisan possessed the skill to create them, and the craft died with them. Astonishingly, no comparable advancements in lens making would emerge globally for several more centuries. As we approach the climax of our list, we arrive at number two, the mysterious submersion of Atlit Yam. Located off the coast of Haifa, Israel, this ancient settlement has been submerged for approximately 8,300 years. While the cause of its watery demise remains elusive, its underwater preservation has been a boon for marine archaeologists. The site reveals astonishingly advanced urban planning for its time, including distinct water wells, individual residences, and segregated burial grounds. Contrary to the popular notion that these ancient people were nomadic hunter-gatherers, Atlit Yam challenges us to reevaluate such assumptions. At the town's core was a freshwater spring encircled by stones. Intriguingly, skeletal remains from the site have yielded the world's oldest known cases of tuberculosis, offering a tantalizing clue as to why the settlement may have been forsaken. And finally, we arrive at the apex of our list with number one, the Irish Dracula. While Bram Stoker's Dracula is famously associated with Transylvania, Romania, could the author's inspiration have been drawn from a source closer to his Irish homeland? Situated between the towns of Garva and Dungiven in northern Derry, Ireland, is a region known as Glenullen. Within it lies a mysterious site, referred to as either the Giant's Grave or Lect Abertoch, or Abertoch's Sepulchre. According to local folklore, this is the final resting place of Abertoch, a deformed chieftain who wielded dark magical powers. His reign of terror was briefly interrupted when he was slain by Cathan, a king from a neighboring tribe. However, Abertok returned from the dead, demanding a gruesome tribute of blood from his subjects. Despite being killed a second time by Cathan, the malevolent sorcerer rose yet again. Due to lingering superstitions, the site has evaded thorough archaeological investigation, leaving its mysteries alluringly unsolved. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more mind-blowing archaeology content so you never miss an episode. Until next time, keep digging into the mysteries of our past.